in Part 1 of Hebrew Astronomy and Revelation, we laid the foundation to understand what we will be able to see unfold in the heavens in the coming years. Watching Part 1 or 2 is not a prerequisite. However, Part 1 would give you a deeper understanding and appreciation of what you will learn in this video. No matter your religious beliefs, or even if you don't believe the Bible is true, I encourage you to watch this video all the way through. The ideas presented may challenge your views, even if you do believe what the Bible says. It is important you get all the information in this video, if not all the videos in the series, before making a conclusion. If the theories presented are true, then time is short. We will know very soon if I am right. Matthew 24 does say that no man knows that day or hour. But Jesus also answered the disciples' question about signs of His coming by saying, Immediately after the oppression of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Later in the chapter it says that, As the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. In the time of Noah, the people had no idea the flood was coming. However, Noah knew the flood was coming. We too are supposed to know the sign of Messiah's coming. Amos 3.7 says, Adonai God does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. In 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks about the return of Messiah. In chapter 5 it says, But you have no need to have anything written to you, brothers, about the times and dates when this will happen, because you yourselves well know that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And it goes on to say that we are not in the dark so that the day should take you by surprise like a thief. I do not believe that we will know the exact day or hour. I do believe we are supposed to know the season and the signs. I find it interesting that, in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, Paul compares the second coming with labor pains of a woman. This study is centered around the sign in Revelation 12 of a pregnant woman giving birth. As this study is about Revelation chapter 12, you may want to read that chapter, if not all of Revelation, before continuing. There are a number of other videos about the first part of Revelation 12. At this time, none look past the events of 9-23-2017 and how the rest of the chapter and other chapters unfold in the heavens. To make it easier to see what is happening in the stars, the size of various planets and minor planets have been greatly increased. None of them are to scale. The minor planets are increased in size millions of times more than a planet like Jupiter. Also, there is a date and time window in either the upper or lower right corner. You may remember from Part 1 that Jupiter is called the King Planet. On 11-20-2016, Jupiter entered the body of Virgo. Normal human gestation is between 40 and 42 weeks. 42 weeks after entering Virgo, Jupiter will cross the hip line on 9-9-2017. Yom Teruah, or the Feast of Trumpets, takes place about two weeks later, around 9-21. On 9-23-2017, the Revelation 12 alignment takes place. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman was clothed with the sun, and the moon was at her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. And she was pregnant, and she cried out, and was in labor. She was also in anguish to give birth. This is the only time since the book of Revelation was written that this alignment takes place. And looking forward about 1,000 years, I have not found it happening again. Let's look at the next verse. And another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great fiery dragon that has seven heads and ten horns, and upon its heads seven diadems. The following images are from Google Sky.
These are infrared images from NASA. The black stripes are due to a curved image being flattened, like on world maps. The exception is a small rectangular area in the constellation Virgo. This small area was at one time visible to the public. It has since been blocked out by NASA for unknown reasons. The blocked area is here in the lower part of Virgo. Here is a picture of the area captured before NASA blocked it. Some people see the head of a fiery dragon in this image. Up to this point, everything that has been presented can be found on many other videos. Now we will start looking beyond the first part of Revelation 12. In this part, we will look at how other verses in chapter 12 can be seen in the heavens. Then in part 4, we will look at the other coming celestial events and how they may be signs of events found in chapters 6 through 16 of Revelation. To truly understand the prophecies found in the Bible, we must look at them from a Hebrew perspective. Keep in mind that the book of Revelation is not one continual story. The story is broken up by the story being told from a different perspective. Chapters 12 through 14 are a synopsis of the story inserted into the narrative already being told. In December 2015, Saturn arrived at the foot of the constellation of the Redeemer holding the serpent. It has been waiting there as the Revelation 12 alignment has been developing. It is interesting that in this same location we find the Dark Horse Nebula. And upon the Dark Horse is the Snake Nebula. The first thing we will observe has possible ties to verse 3 that says, A fiery dragon that has seven heads and ten horns, and upon its heads seven diadems. Above the serpent's head in the constellation of the Redeemer, we find a constellation called the Northern Crown. It is made up of seven stars. Verse 4, And its tail dragged the third of the stars that are in the heavens, and cast them upon the earth. And the dragon was standing before the woman, who was ready to give birth, that when she had delivered, it would devour her son. The Hebrew and Aramaic words for third also mean three. We see that after the alignment on 923-2017, that the three wandering stars that were in Leo are quickly swept below Libra and the galactic equator. I believe the galactic equator represents the division between the second and third heavens. This would mean that Sagittarius represents the second heaven. The second heaven is where the unseen spiritual powers of the air operate on earth, as mentioned in verses like Ephesians 6.12. A second possibility to explain the third of the stars is seen if we consider the moons of Saturn. There are 183 moons in our solar system. 61 is one-third of 183. Saturn has 62 moons. Anywhere Saturn goes, it takes one-third of our solar system's moons with it. Two millennia ago, we had no knowledge of more than one moon in the universe. If John were seeing moons, he likely would have thought them to be stars, just as planets were thought to be stars. Let's read verses 5-9, through nine, and then break them down. And she delivered the son, the male, who was to shepherd all the nations, with a rod of iron. And her son was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled to the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, 
where she would be sustained 1,260 days. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting with the dragon, and the dragon and its angels fought, and did not prevail, neither was a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was cast down, that chief serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, which deceives all the earth. And it was cast down into the earth, and its angels were cast down with it. We will examine these verses not in the order we read them, but in how we see them played out in the stars. The first verse to look at is verse 7. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting with the dragon, and the dragon and its angels fought. If you will remember from the first video, I believe that Mercury, Mars, and Venus represent archangels. We can see this war displayed in the heavens. On 12-6-2017, Mercury will converge with Saturn at the edge of the galactic equator. This is the first of ten strikes Mercury will take at Saturn and the first strike following the Revelation 12 alignment. Let me share my thoughts on these strikes. I am interpreting a planetary convergence with Saturn as symbolic of a battle strike. From the first strike on 12-6-2017 until the last strike before Saturn leaves Aquarius on 1-18-2025 is 2600 days, or 7 years, 1 month, and 12 days. You will see later the importance of Saturn leaving Aquarius. As you may know, there is prophetic meaning to letters and numbers in Hebrew. When considering those meanings, the strikes seem to be holding a message. The number 26 means power of salvation. The fact that these strikes span 2600 days may be showing this meaning exponentially. There are 21 times that a planet will strike Saturn during this period. Then in a short time, after Saturn leaves Aquarius, there are three final strikes. The number 21 represents the end of distress we can see God's provision in the midst of distress. The tabernacle was made of 21 layers. There were 10 sheets of linen and 11 sheets of goat's hair for the covering. The Hebrew word for distress is Sarah. It is used in Jeremiah 30 verse 7 where it speaks of the time of Jacob's trouble. After Saturn leaves Aquarius, there are three final strikes bringing the total number to 24. The number 24 represents priestly service. It is made up of the letters Kaf and Dalit. These two together signify an open palm, showing us an open door. The time from the Revelation 12 alignment until the last strike is about seven years and seven months. For now, we will only touch upon some of these strikes and how they are described in chapter 12. In part four, we will look at all of them. Verses eight and nine say, and the dragon and its angels did not prevail, neither was a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was cast down. Hanukkah, also called the Festival of Lights, takes place on 1213 to 1220 in 2017. No, Hanukkah is not one of the designated feasts of the Lord. It, however, seems to have significance, as it is mentioned in chapter 10 of the book of John. It is called the Feast of Dedication in most translations. It was in celebration of the dedication of the temple. It is during this feast that Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give eternal life to them. They will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. On 12-21-2017, Saturn is obscured by a conjunction with the Sun, making it impossible to see Saturn from Earth. Since Saturn cannot be seen from Earth, this seems to be reflecting the part of the verse that says, Neither was a place found for them in heaven. Then on 12-25-2017, after having been at the base of the Redeemer constellation for 24 months, Saturn will cross the galactic equator as it is struck by Venus, and the great dragon was cast down. The time span from this day until Saturn completely leaves Aquarius on 12-24-2024 is exactly seven years. The first date was just after Hanukkah, 
and the 2024 date is just before Hanukkah. Also, on 1225, as the wandering stars continue to be swept away, Jupiter enters Libra. In verse 5 it says that, the sun was caught up to God and to his throne. Libra in Jewish astronomy represents the judgment throne of God. This may also be a sign of Daniel 9 verses 13 and 14. I kept watching the night visions when I saw, coming with the clouds of heaven, someone like a son of man. He approached the Ancient One and was led into his presence, and to him was given rulership, glory, and a kingdom, so that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His rulership is an eternal rulership that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. In 2018, on 112, Mercury takes the second strike at Saturn, which is now in Sagittarius. By 126, 2018, all of the planets are below Jupiter, which is in Libra. Chapter 10 says, And I heard a great voice from heaven that said, now is the deliverance and the power and the kingdom of our God, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them night and day before our God. And they were victorious by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. I know many believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, as I once did. There are a number of things in Scripture that have made me change my mind. Verses 10 and 11 are ones that support pre-tribulation rapture. The following verses are some that lead me to believe otherwise, especially verse 17. I will make a video later on different rapture theories. Therefore heaven celebrate and those who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil, who has great fury, has descended to them, as he knows he has little time. Again the archer, which is Sagittarius, represents the second heaven. The goat, which is Capricorn, represents the earth and the water-bearer, Aquarius, represents the sea. Verse 13 goes on, And when the dragon saw that it had been cast down to the earth, it persecuted the woman who had given birth to the male. The woman is Israel. Verse 14, And two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman to fly into the wilderness to her place, to be sustained there for a time, times, and half a time from before the face of the serpent. Time, times, and half a time is three and a half years. Verse 15 And the serpent cast water like a river out of its mouth after the woman, to cause her to be taken by the waters. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed that river which the dragon had cast from its mouth. And the dragon raged against the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua. Believers are the remnant of her seed. So, if we look at what takes place in the heavens from the fall of 2016 until the spring of 2018, I believe we can see all of chapter 12 displayed. The signs in the heavens in 2017 and 2018 seem to hold significance in their own right. When we consider what scripture has to say about times and generations, we find events that also point to these years. Let's consider some time spans given in the Bible. Forty years is a time of testing. Fifty years is tied to Jubilee, when there is liberation and land is returned to the original owner. Seventy years is a period of captivity before returning to homeland. One hundred years is a generation period before returning to the land. 120 years is the time limit that God would strive with man. Matthew 24 verses 32 to 34 say, Now let the fig tree teach you its lesson. When its branches begin to sprout and leaves appear, you know that summer is approaching. In the same way, when you see all these things, you are to know that the time is near, right at the door. Yes, I tell you that this people will certainly not pass away before all these things happen. Israel is regarded to be the fig tree in this scripture. Here are some key dates regarding Israel. In 1897, there was a meeting in Switzerland called the First Zionist Congress. It was an official act to prepare for Jews to return to Israel. 
On November 2, 1917, there was the Balfour Declaration for the purpose of establishing a Jewish homeland in Palestine. November 29, 1947, the UN made a partition plan to return Jews to the homeland. May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation again. June 7, 1967, Jerusalem was recaptured. September 17, 1978, the Camp David Accords were signed in hopes of bringing peace to Israel. When we plug in the various time spans to these dates, we find some interesting things. If we add 50 years to 1897, we have the year 1947. If we add 70 years, we come to 1967. If we add 120 years, we arrive at 2017. When we add 100 years to 1917, we again have 2017. If we add 70 years to when Israel was becoming a nation in 1947 and 1948, we have 2017 and 2018. Looking at 1967 plus 50 years, we come to 2017. And last, adding 40 years to 1978, we come to the year 2018. Like all the information being presented, these time spans and dates may have no significance. However, that would mean that there is a massive amount of coincidence that point to the years 2017 and 2018. Jesus said that it would be like the days of Noah when he would return. God told Noah in Genesis 6 that his spirit will not struggle forever with man since he is but flesh, and his days will be 120 years. Our world is filled with violence and corruption, probably not unlike the days of Noah. And it has been 120 years since the seed was planted to restore Israel. It is not hard to imagine that 2017 may be the time that God's Spirit ends the struggle with man. Let me end this by encouraging you. I know that this subject is frightening for most people. We don't want to believe that the events of Revelation can or will take place in our lifetime. I was raised in church but it was not until I was in the eighth grade that I heard anything about the apocalypse. And then it was from a friend while at school. I was terrified. The reason was because I was made aware of the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast, and the horrible events. I remained ignorant of the goodness of God towards his children that will take place at the same time. Now that I have studied the word and found out the whole story, there is no fear. The apocalypse will be a terrible and trying time. I believe it will also be like the first exodus. We, like the Hebrews in Egypt, will be in the land during the plagues, but not subject to them. If we follow God's direction and provision for deliverance, then we will experience our own Passover before entering the Promised Land. Remember and stand fast on these promises. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 For God has not intended that we should experience His fury but that we should gain deliverance through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, who died on our behalf, so that whether we are alive or dead, we may live along with him. And Revelation 17:14, they, that's the beasts of Revelation, will go to war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will defeat them, because he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are called, chosen, and faithful will overcome along with him. In part 4, we will look at celestial events in the coming years. We will examine how the strikes at Saturn seem to correlate with the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls of Revelation. We will also look at the minor planets and how they may also be a part of the story. If you like what you are seeing, please share with your friends. Click on the subscribe button to have new videos show up in your recommended list on YouTube.